If you've played Mario 64 DS, then you'll remember that Mario is required to unlock Luigi as well as unlock the power-ups and fighting the final Bowser. But what if there was a way to beat the game without oh. Mario at all? Today, we're gonna find out if that's possible, and as a bonus, we're gonna collect as many stars as we possibly can. We'll start, of course, in bob -Ohm Battlefield. The first star with King bob -Ohm is easy peasy, but right after that is our first dilemma, racing Koopa the Quick. The only way to race him is with Mario, which would defeat the whole purpose of this challenge. So instead, I collected star 6 and moved on to Wop's Fortress. I was able to get every star here except the last one. For that, you have to break this red brick with Mario, Luigi, or Wario so you can activate the star in the glass box. But Yoshi can't break them to my knowledge, so we may come back. The hardest star to get here was the red coins, because there was no easy way to get to these floating islands, which just so happened to have the last two red coins I need. I couldn't kick this plank down to walk across, and since I have no skills with the DS version of Mario 64, long jumps and triple jumps from the tower weren't working either. After messing around for a bit, I accidentally grabbed the top of the plank and realized this might work after all. After a few tries, I found that by building a bit of speed and jumping, you can make it to the arrow-shaped island to get all the red coins. After that, I went into Peach's Slide, and both stars there were a cakewalk. Next up was Jolly Roger Bay. At first, I was a bit worried about the 100 coins, because I knew I wasn't getting all the blue coins, seeing as you need the Koopa Shell to do that. And I can't get the Koopa Shell without the other character, since it's in this box. But I only worried, because I know the original Jolly Roger Bay is very stingy with its coins. Thankfully, the DS game is much more generous. It adds Goombas in the cave, and there's extra coins on ground water, so I was pretty much set. I got every star here except 6 and 7. 6 requires Luigi and his invisible power-up, while 7 requires Wario and his metal power-up. I tried perfect swimming to the star, since you can do that in the original game, but I had no luck, and there seemed to be some sort of invisible barrier. We'll come back to this stage later and see if we have more luck. At this point, I decided to try getting that power-up switch on. While I'm able to look into the light as Yoshi, all that happened was I dropped through the sky without a wing cap on. I tried looking up again, only for the sky to call Mario's name. So it looks like this challenge just got harder. Now it's without Mario and without power-ups. But let's keep things cool and move on to Cool Cool Mountain. Star 2 wasn't something I could do, since baby penguins don't like getting eaten by green dinosaurs. I also couldn't access Star 5, since I needed to complete Star 2 to get to that. And Star 7 didn't show up either, because that would require me to complete every star before that. Star 6 is the wall-kicking one, in which you're supposed to use Mario to wall-kick off the walls to nab it. Now, you can easily do this with Luigi's backflip if we had him, but I wanted to challenge myself and see if this was possible with Yoshi. A backflip wasn't getting me enough height for this final part, so I tried a triple jump. After a couple tries, I noticed that Yoshi was getting higher than the platform, so this was definitely doable. After dozens of attempts, I perfectly angled Yoshi's triple jump to landing right on top without a single wall jump or backflip. And now it's time to take out Bowser. <laughs> or I guess we aren't allowed in. I was really starting to get worried about this challenge at this point, so I went ahead and completed Sunshine Isles while I brainstormed on what to do. The last idea I had was to try to get some stars at Big Boo's Hunt, but that didn't work either. In this game, Yoshi can't eat or ground pound the booze, which to this day still makes no sense. So now, unfortunately, we're at a bit of a dead end. I can't go to Big Boo's Hunt, I can't get any more stars from the levels I can access, I can't go to Bowser, and I can't hit the switch to turn on the power-ups. Now was the time to do some research, so the first thing I did was look up Mario 64 DS speedruns. What I found instead was, first Bowser battle is Yoshi, and thought, okay, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And then the video is literally him opening the door with Mario first, then running back, changing into Yoshi and moving on. I mean, I could technically do this since I wouldn't be entering a level with Mario, but that's kind of lame if you ask me. So I decided to go into the Mario 64 DS speedrunning Discord to see if anyone there would know, and I got a response from a guy called a deal, and he said, Sadly, there's no known way of getting past the 12-star door with Yoshi. 
And I should phrase Yoshi specifically, because you can get past that door with other characters. By using, say, Luigi in the Jolly Roger Bay Room, you can clip onto this pillar and align yourself using the seams of the level and follow that with a backflip so that he'll spawn upstairs. But like he said, this did not seem possible with Yoshi. Actually, I might have an idea now that I think about it. Adil said that there is a one-up in the room that chases Yoshi around, and when Yoshi eats an item, he has one frame where he can jump. By combining these two elements, he thought it may be possible to get on the pillar with Yoshi. Several minutes later, he sent another message. Okay, I made it up the pillar. And this was followed by a couple screenshots of his attempts at this trick. And next thing I knew, I was sent a video of a brand new task trick never seen or done before. Yoshi does a side flip to activate the 1-up, eats the 1-up which is then followed by a back flip. Then he carefully walks his way through the sea making sure he remains out of bounds while also not falling. After that is a few extremely precise jumps towards this gate, slides off the gate and literally up warps to the top of the castle, and falls all the way into the loading zone which leads him to the upstairs. This is a crazy feat that all happened in a span of an hour and completely out of nowhere. And believe me guys, this is just the beginning. So now that we can get upstairs with Yoshi, what's next? Well, I think it's time we unlock some characters, so next is Wario. And now we have another problem, and that's of course this giant mirror. Yoshi can't do anything here, right? Well, crazy enough, by aligning Yoshi at a certain angle at the mirror's pillar, he can perform high long jumps in the direction of the wall. With good momentum, he can clip right through and enter the mirror without using Luigi. And here's the kicker out of all of this, Yoshi is the only character that was never meant to enter this Chief Chili level. You can fight the boss with Mario and Wario by using the caps, but for the first time, Yoshi is along for the ride. And after the fight against them, thankfully it doesn't crash the game either. So just like that, we now have access to Wario. Now before we move on, we're gonna go ahead and just unlock Mario, but not actually play as him. The only reason we're doing this is to prevent the game from crashing if we eventually get to fighting Bowser, because that's known to happen when he isn't unlocked. And since we can up warp with Yoshi, we can use the exact same tactic to get ourselves inside Bowser in the Dark World. By doing this, we were able to grab the red coin and switch star pretty easily. So at this point, lots of big crazy moves have been made to this challenge, and the final one is to unlock Luigi so we can get back to grabbing as many stars as possible. Now unlike Yoshi, Wario was able to ground pound the booze, and while I was here, I also did the red coins in the courtyard star. But then, it was on to Big Boo's haunt. I wasn't able to get upstairs to Luigi's painting because Wario can't jump high enough, so I completed the first star so the stairs would open up. And then I tried to get up top and realized Wario's jump really is the worst thing ever. I could not make my way up no matter how much I tried. So I talked to Adil again and he brought up that the Luigi cap will always spawn on a certain star before you even unlock them, since normally the caps don't spawn unless you unlock that character. This concept also happens in Hazy Maze Cave, where before unlocking Wario, you can grab this cap off of Dory for a star. I found that by selecting star 3, that's when Luigi's cap spawned in the back room of the house. So yes, I'm about to unlock Luigi while using a Luigi cap before actually unlocking Luigi. But anyway, once I made it through Luigi's Big Boo level, I was finally granted access to Luigi, so it's time to head back downstairs and see what other stars are possible. Going back into Babam Battlefield, Luigi was able to get all the red coins, 100 coins, and even Star 5 where you shoot out of the cannon for the 5 secret coins. This one took a while because I had to keep climbing up the mountain to grab one coin at a time, but alas, it was doable. After that, I dove into Womp's Fortress and finished up that Switch Star since I can break it now with Luigi. Next was Jolly Roger Bay, and even now I still couldn't do Star 6 because there was no way to get past the cage without the power-ups unlocked. But Star 7 is interesting because I get to introduce you guys to our good old pal named Water Storage. Here's how it kind of works. We start this star by selecting Yoshi with the Luigi hat on. Then you'll break this box to reveal the shell, take damage so you'll revert to Yoshi and eat the shell before it disappears. Then you have to jump and throw the shell at just the right time so Yoshi lands on the shell in the water. 
This tricks the game into thinking you're no longer in the water, so I just rode all the way down to the bottom and got off the shell so I could grab the star. And after that, I went back into Cool Cool Mountain and grabbed the remaining stars I couldn't get before. Nothing too interesting here. Big Boo's Haunt was next on my list, and I was able to do all the stars except six where you have to go into the secret room of the eye. I need the invisible power-up to do that, so it's not gonna happen. And around this time, I also knocked out that secret battle fort level. And that is all the stars we can get on the main floor, but what about the basement? We haven't even gone there yet, and since I didn't fight the first Bowser, I don't have the key to get there. Thankfully, there's another route that uses Yoshi. By double jumping towards this waterfall and slide kicking in this spot, you can build enough speed to clip into the castle and land on the ground to trick the game into thinking you aren't in water. Then you'll simply walk through the door and you're set. So now that we drain the water and switch back to Luigi, we can plow through the rest of these basement levels. First up was Hazy Maze Cave. I could grab every star here except the third one. And that's because normally, you need Metal Wario to push down on this switch. Instead, I tried ground pounding into it from above the water since the ground pound got me pretty deep in before. But for some reason, there's like an invisible force field that stops you from doing that. So it looks like there's no other option but to use something called a block flip. What I mean by that is we're gonna have to use Yoshi and hug this wall, then move the camera down and to the right, zoom back out so he clips under the stage and lands in some water. At this point, we're gonna have to swim in these very specific directions to ensure we don't accidentally fall off the stage, and after a certain point, we're gonna jump out of the water, feel for a door, and kablam! We're behind that cage now, and the star is possible. At this time, I also visited the Metal Cap stage, and was able to do the red coins but not the Balloon Mario one, for obvious reasons. The red coins were a big pain without the Metal Cap. I had to dive into the water dozens of times to hit these coins since the camera didn't cooperate and I had to guess where they were, making it harder than it needed to be. But otherwise, it was more than doable. There's nothing to really say about Lethal Lava Land, except that every star here was possible. I moved on to Shifting Sandland after that, and every star was pretty easy except for this one red coin. Since I couldn't fly to it with Mario, I had to use Luigi and was really struggling to reach it. I tried using backflips and always just barely missed it, so then I tried a backflip off the top of the pyramid and that didn't work either. My next idea was to use the cannon, so I opened that guy up and was able to touch the coin this way, but it was impossible for me to survive afterwards thanks to this giant pile of quicksand. My last idea was to triple jump dive off the pillar which seemed unlikely, but after dozens of tries I actually managed to do that and survive. After I got all these stars, I got a few other miscellaneous ones like talking to Toad and the two under the moat. And believe it or not, you can actually get both of them. The cage at the end may look too tall to jump over, and well that's because it is, but to get this red coin star, it requires a task trick called dive resetting, which allows Luigi to basically jump Jump twice to get the star. The Switch star, on the other hand, is an entirely different story. Normally, you're required to use Mario to balloon yourself and wall jump to the top, but you can actually do this one with Luigi. You start by backflipping to the Switch, then after activating it, you'll simply backflip your way to the beginning, then do a long series of slide kicks up this wall until you get near the top. Timing this is insanely hard, by the way. The only way I could do this was to roll my thumb across A and B. Then you'll get to this platform and backflip again so you'll have just enough height to make it across and grab the star. We're almost done with the basement, but we still have this 30 star door to go through. But as you'd expect, we can't get through unless you're Mario. Stumped as I was, a deal showed me a video that would allow me to get into this room and I was actually able to do this myself. Basically, I used Yoshi to run ahead of this bunny. Then I had to grab the bunny while also being lined up with this wall. After that, I could clip out of bounds and literally swim underneath the castle. Lucky for us, water's there in the first place. I had to swim down and to the right to make sure I was aligned with the hallway behind the 30-star door. After doing that for a while, I jumped out of the water and had to feel my way around and look for Bowser's opening. And voila, we have made it. The red coins and switch star were easy to grab, as you'd expect. The last basement stage to do was Dire Dire Docks. Every star was possible here except for star 6 because I don't have access to the power-up to go through the cage. Now the Jetstream star was interesting because you must have the ship spawned in for it to be possible without using Wario's metal power-up. You can't just swim down and grab the star. 
All you have to do is go under the wing of this ship, jump and ground pound, and you'll clip underneath the water so you can grab the star. For those wanting to try any of these glitches at home, this one is super easy to do, and it's really gratifying watching Yoshi run around on the floor. And that's it for the basement, so it's time to move upstairs. I'll first tackle Wet Dry World, and all these stars were easy to do, including Star 6. And that's the one behind the cage where you'd need a power-up to get through, so why am I saying this was easy? Well, by using Luigi, I pushed this block at just the right spot, ran up into the corner, zoomed in, moved the camera to the right, and zoomed the camera out allowing me to clip through to out of bounds. Then you have to carefully swim in a way so you'll load in the city portion of the level while staying out of bounds. And at that point you can just swim around to grab the cage star. And once you get that, you're golden. Next I went to Tall Tall Mountain, and all the stars here were easy enough. Tiny Huge Island went well too, except for stars 3 and 4. Koopa once again wants to race Mario, which we can't do, and star 4 isn't available unless you complete star 3. After that was Snowman's Land. All the stars were doable except star 6 because you need the invisible power-up to get the star underneath the cage. After that, we have the tippy top to play next. To get up there, Adil sent me this really sick task clip skipping the 50 star door entirely. He used Wario in this pillar to build speed with long jumps and managed to clip through the mirror. Then he ran towards the Wario painting and clipped at the bottom of that so he was out of bounds. This was followed by Sly kicking himself to a place where he could up warp and end up in over the rainbow. Now for this level, you can get the Brick Star with Wario with a well-timed long jump, but the Red Coin Star wasn't as gracious. With some careful routing, you can grab all the Red Coins, but there's no way to get back up to the star afterwards since you can't fly. And just like that, we have two levels to go. Tick Tock Clock allowed us to collect every star, even Star 1, which would seem impossible since you need Luigi to be invisible to go through this cage. What Adil did was he started by climbing up the stage for a bit, then did a slide kick while this block was rotating which essentially pushed Luigi out of bounds. Then by going across the seam, he could clip back into the stage and grab the star. And after that, all the stars were a walk in the park. And finally, on to Rainbow Ride. Every star here was also possible, including Star 7. Now for this star, you would normally need Balloon Mario to hit the switch and float himself up top, but there's actually a relatively easy solution with Luigi. By jumping off the carpet and making your way to the switch, you're given just enough time to run back into the house so you can land on the carpet and grab the star. So now we've gotten just about every star we can, and all that's left to tackle is Final Bowser. Obviously the game wants us to use Mario, but we have one more trick up our sleeve, and it's actually not even task required. All we need to do is line up Luigi on the second step, build up a run, charge forward, and immediately slide kick. After that, you'll move Luigi a bit to the right and up, and ground pound to ensure your momentum stops. Then when you land, you basically just feel your way around to get inside Bowser in the sky. Now once inside, I was able to get both the stars and even fight Bowser. After the three hits, he dissolved into nothing and just like that, we can officially say that Mario 64 DS is indeed possible without using Mario. My final star count that I got was 134 out of 150 stars. I cannot believe we got even close to that many. And maybe in the future more tricks will be discovered, which could raise this number up even more. Now, before ending the video, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Adil and the Mario 64 DS Discord server for being so kind and for helping me make this video to what it is. You should go check out Adil's channel. In fact, I'm going to link you guys this task of Mario 64 DS that was beat without jumping. It's pretty darn crazy. And with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time.